As a, thank you, Katya, for the introduction. And uh, yes, I would like to present you the, the work that I've been doing recently, which is about uh, cofinology monitoring from Green LAI time series, derived from Landsat 8 and, and Sentinel 2. Okay. So satellite remote sensing data are increasingly used for analyzing dynamic land surface uh, processes at different scales, uh, giving the temporal and spatial coverage that provides, and therefore becoming a valuable tool in relevant contexts like uh, food security, assisting agricultural practices, or studying the, the vegetation response to environmental changes. Particularly for crop monitoring, uh, proper spatial and temporal resolutions are required to, to be able to characterize crops at their different uh, phenological stages. And typically, the, the study of uh, vegetation phenology, uh, it's done through the estimation of the so-called phenological metrics based on time series uh, functional analysis. So here's a simple demonstration case of a temporal profile of a given vegetation index. Uh, describing a, a typical crop growing cycle, which corresponds to a, to a single season. Uh, so phenological metrics like uh, start and end of the season, uh, they approximate the timing of phenological events. So start of the season is also referred as green update and end of the season as dormancy or, or senescence. Uh, also, length of the season uh, is obtained uh, as the difference between start and end of the season, and it could be associated to the complete temporal extension of the period of development of, of, of the plants. Uh, other phenological indicators are the, the amplitude as the difference between the maximum value and the minimum base level value. And uh, finally, the, the area under the, um, the season curve. Our study focuses on, on a single site, which is located in the Northern Nile Delta, uh, which represents the most important agricultural region of uh, Egypt, where intensive agricultural schemes are predominant and, and the majority of crops are cultivated under irrigation with, uh, with water uh, mainly coming from the, from the Nile. There are two main cropping systems. Uh, on one hand, single cropping parcels corresponding to annual perennial crops, such as uh, grape and, and other citrus species. And on the other hand, uh, crop rotation parcels with uh, different crop types planted per year. So the main crops cultivated under this uh, scheme are maize, rice, winter and clover. So this study will focus on these crop types. Also, uh, given the regular climatic condition of the region, there's a there's established crop calendar, which we we will later use as a as a reference. As for the remote sensing data, we, we use the harmonized Landsat 8 and Sentinel-2 surface reflectant dataset. This dataset is produced by NASA and, and provides uh, seamless products of both satellites by, by carrying out several uh, common adjustments. So the products are atmospherically corrected and, and cloud masked using a, a common radiative transfer algorithm. They are also adjusted um, to represent the, the same spectral response. And they are gridded to a common pixel resolution and map projection. So, and they use the same tilling system as, uh, as Sentinel-2. So we downloaded all the images available over, over our, our study site of the two satellite collections from the beginning of 2016 uh, to the end of 2020 with a spatial resolution of, uh, of 30 meters. Okay, uh, here you can see the, the main workflow follow. Um, so first, each time series uh, collection was separate, separately processed for green LAI retrieval, apply, applying a GPR model, which was originally developed for Sentinel-2. But given that Landsat 8 and Sentinel-2 make, uh, make similar measurements in terms of, uh, of spectral and spatial characteristics, the original model was resampled to the spectral configuration of Landsat and, and then applied to the, to the Landsat collection. So then we obtained two single sensor green LI time series. And for combining both of them, uh, we applied two methods, the Savitsis-Golai, 
which is a well-known smoothing filter based on on a moving window on a moving average window and in Gaussian processes, uh, which is a, also a famous uh, machine learning technique, which uh, performs a temporal gap filling interpolation. So the four gear LAI time series were used to extract phenology, phenology metrics per crop type only at parcel level. And the, this uh, phenology extraction method choose was the seasonal amplitude uh, method but before estimating the phenological metrics, uh, its crop season must be first detected. So for that, we set two different thresholds. The prominent threshold that evaluates if the season peak is significantly high or enough high, and the minimum separation is the number of days between two consecutive seasons peaks. These values are, are usually defined and, and we set them as the optimal values to to be able to detect um, as, as many seasons as, uh, as possible. So here you can see in these figures, uh, which uh, they illustrate the, the temporal evolution of green LAI time series over two different parcels. So above you can see seasonal dynamics with uh, successive crop cycles, and we can distinguish two planting and, and harvesting events within uh, one year. And the figure below corresponds to, to a single crop type parcel with, uh, with only a growing cycle, a single growing cycle covering um, a complete year. Uh, we can also see that uh, in both cases, the, the LAI estimations from both satellites collections show a, a reasonable compatibility and without mm, great discrepancies. <clears throat> okay, so as I mentioned before, the, the phenology extraction procedure was uh, carried out at parcel level. So first we average the green LAI time series within the parcel limits, and then we apply the, the phenology estimation uh, procedure. We had information of the crop types planted from 2016 to 2019 for uh, 56 parcels in total. So uh, ideally, as you can see, uh, each year two different crops are planted and harvested, and the uh, and the maximum number of of crop season that can be detected per parcel uh, will be eight. Uh, but unfortunately, on the other hand, we we didn't have exact information of the planting and harvesting dates, so we we use the fixed crop calendar as a reference with uh, yeah fixed dates. Okay, so we start with the, with the results. Uh, in this table, you can see the, the number of uh, detected crop cycles or season with respect to the number of planted crops per each crop type in total for all years. So I think it's clearly to see that the, the combined sensor time series with, uh, with the Savitsis Golai and Gaussian processes were in general the ones achieving the, the highest number of crops in, in relative terms. So for, I mean, although like they have like a similar performances, uh, we can say, well, for brevity, we choose the, the Gaussian process uh, time series to carry out the, the following results that uh, will be presented uh, in, this, uh, in this presentation. Uh, so as an example, uh, below you can see the, the temporal evolution and interannual variations of uh, alphanological metrics for all the rice and, and clover crops detected per year. So in general, for our crops, the, the start of the season dates fell after the, the, the planting and the, and the harvesting dates. Uh, and the season length is around uh, 19 days for summer crops like rice, while for clover, for example, is, uh, is almost uh, the double and it's around the, 180 days on average. And differences in area are also clear between the two crops, so that uh, crops with the longer season length are the ones with, uh, with the higher uh, area estimations. Well, uh, here we present the, like similarly, like the distribution of the phenological metrics per crop type, but during the whole period from 2016 to 2019. Well, as you can see, uh, differences between, between summer and uh, winter crops are, are pretty obvious, but mm, it's not the case for, for crop types of the same season. 
but in fact, for for almost all phenological metrics, they they follow a, a really close distribution. And but, however, some some slight differences can be observed in 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 the end of the season distribution, or in the case of summer crops, since uh, rice tends to to reach dormancy later than than maize. And also in the case of winter crops, uh, wheat shows an early green up compared to, to clover. Uh, although the, the rest of the phenological parameters, they, they, are, they look really similar. No? So they, they cannot be distinguished based on that. So we, we move now to the, to the phenology mapping where we only use the, the GPR time series for, for estimating uh, phenology. So as I said before, since there are two crop seasons uh, within a year, we, we map them separately. So this figure shows the, the phenological metrics of the winter season. So for all years, there's a, there's a similar spe spatial pattern. S um, some, difference can, some differences can be observed in, in 2008, where, where we detected uh, an early green up, which corresponds to which corresponded to uh, later dormancy, uh, maybe due to favorable weather conditions. And 2017 was the, was the year of the maximum uh, area estimated. And it's clear to see that it also, on the other hand, it's clear to see that in 2019, there's a considerable proportion of, uh, of pixels which, uh, which are not mapped. So these are the maps uh, corresponding to the summer season. Uh, in this case, uh, according to the regular tendency, a remarkable difference can be observed in, in 2018 with a, with a general late dormancy. And 2016 was the, was the year of the maximum area and, and 2018, the one of, with, the, with, the, with the lowest estimations. So you should have realized that here too, that the, there is an area on the center of the map, again, that uh, is not mapped. And because uh, phenology there is, uh, is not detected. So if we, if we have a closer look to, to this area, which is not mapped, here's a, here's a capture of, uh, of a region of interest over this area. And we can, we can clearly see that the, the passes are, are really small. So, if you look at the temporal profile also, you could see that the, um, at the beginning of 2016 until 2017, uh, crop seasons are shorter, let's say. But however, from, from 2018 onwards, the, the seasonal dynamics change and the, the crop growing cycle, it, uh, it tends to be longer. No? And it, uh, it covers like uh, almost, uh, almost one year, a complete year. And also here is, is critical the, the dynamic range of LAI, which is rather small. You can, you can see that the LAI profile goes from, from two to, to three. And, and, there, and therefore, the, for example, the minimum prominence threshold uh, might not detect this, the, this crop seasons. So with that, I, I wanted to underline the, the difficulty to set uh, general parameters applicable to, to a long-term series where we found uh, variations in, in crop uh, seasonal patterns. So um, finally, uh, we can conclude that the, the proposed workflow enabled the detection of uh, successive crop growth cycles per year and both green LAI time series and phenology extracted showed like uh, a consistent temporal evolution for, for, for all time series. And uh, we also proved that the, the use of the combined sensor with uh, the combined sensor time series improved the crop seasonality detection and uh, phenology extraction and achieving the, the, the highest detection percentage, which, is, which was about the 75% uh, of crops detected with, with respect to the crops that were planted. But however, we, we faced some, some limitations uh, regarding phenology mapping for, uh, for long-term series, which, uh, which still remains an issue. I mean, it's difficult to, 
to set a, a standard automatic uh, process because there are, there are some threshold values that are specifically changed for they, that they specifically change for for certain parcels and uh, this issue may could may could be solved by using another phrenology structure method maybe or by implementing implementing an iterative workflow so so that each time different threshold values are used like in a loop or so and until achieving the maximum number of seasons possible uh, the process is it remains iterating and also should be noted that uh, initially for our study site, the, the number of cloud-free acquisitions available was uh, relatively high. So maybe uh, stronger improvements could be expected if we if extended this study to, to other areas where the, uh, where the cloud uh, contamination is, uh, is more critical. And, and, and that's all. So, yeah, that would be all. Uh, thank you very much for your for attending.